This is Dolany TV, ladies and gentlemen, your A Division runner ups in the slow pitch tournament I was in this weekend, the Pirates. It was a hell of a run, a fantastic weekend of ball. Five games all told, four and one, of course. Well, for the runners up, that means we lost in the final, but it is what it is. I have to give a shout out to my main man, Joey Crank and the Bombs. Joey tunes into the channel once in a while or very often, I don't know, I, I, I was going for breakfast. I was hungry, guys. I was, I was starving. It was breakfast time this morning after crushing our first game. Good brunch, good games. Oh, man, fantastic weekend of ball. And you know what? It's, it's southern Alberta. You're going to get rainstorms, thunderstorms, sunshine. It'll be raining while it's sunny out. It'll be snowing in the middle of June. Oh, guys, fantastic weekend. However, that also meant I didn't have anything up until, well, right obviously now. And we've had a couple of things about, yes, Pugliarvi kind of leaning towards he'll be somewhere else at the start of next year. I, I, I guess if we're asking ourselves if that's news, I don't think it's news. Because whether we are in the keep, yes, a Pugliarvi camp or not, it's, 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 it's one thing or another, right? Either it's been pushed that he's getting traded or you've pushed for him to get traded. So it's... It is what it is at this point with him. However, the bigger news is out of the TSN dudes in Pierre Lebrun and Darren Drager mentioning the interest in Lucic from the Vancouver Canucks. Again, this, this reignites this debate. This reignites this debate for the third time. The first time it is, hmm, maybe a Lucic for Erickson deal straight up would be good to go. Then all of a sudden, it was, yeah, the Canucks and Oilers actually talked about a Lucic for Erickson deal. Well, okay. All right. All right. Now you got me thinking. But then we had the news the other day that the Oilers had kicked tires on James Neal. So at this point, the thing is, we're, we're, we're into that part of the season where until something happens, it's just going to be throwing a million different possibilities. I've thrown five or six out myself. However, it all just boils down to one simple thing. The GM making the right move at the right time. The right move at the right time. Yeah, that sounds like I'm saying the right, right move for moving Lucic. You don't know, right? You never know what's going to be the right move when you make it in friggin' June. Obviously, yeah, you can look back and say Taylor Hall for Adam Larson was the wrong move. I'm in that camp. However, you look at it and you say, well, okay, a lot of people will argue otherwise. Getting Adam Larson, one of the best young D-men out of the East at that time. Well, you know what? Hindsight's 2020, and Future Vision's also, well, 2020. Anyway, bigger thing, right? Off back again on the Lucic rumors, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep myself steady here, guys. Uh, my, my ankles are burning. My knee is, if I touch it, I scream almost kind of deal, so it's, it's pretty brutal. However, the main point about Lucic and Erickson, this again turns us back around onto this topic, and I think the thing is, is you have to look at the deflection maneuvers by both GMs in the situation. For Ken Holland, the Lucic fiasco deflects from the fiasco the day before about Yesa Pugliarvi. That's bang, right? Even if they come out in the same day, which I think they did, it just deflects the spotlight somewhere else for a little bit. That's the beauty of this for the Oilers. For the Canucks, well, you deflect the spotlight to what actually might be real roster upgrades for them, right? They've got some cap space. They can make some moves. They have to sign some players. Obviously, they have to sign Besser, but today, guess what? Canucks fans aren't talking about how much does Besser want. They're talking about why or why not Lucic. That's, that's what they're talking about today. So it, it does, again, as I said for the Oilers situation, deflect the blame a little bit. And, well, blame, spotlight, whatever you want to say. And it, it, that's a good thing to do in the offseason. There's no doubt what that does in the offseason when you can deflect the blame a little bit. But... I'm avoiding the topic. I'm avoiding the situation at hand. It's essentially in Darren Drager's motion to move Lucic to Vancouver. It's the fact that the Oilers would have to add a sweetener. That's the thing. That's that's. So we first had Oilers and Canucks maybe discussing Lucic Erickson. Oilers Canucks did discuss Lucic Erickson. 
Now Oilers, Lucic, Erickson, Canucks would have to add Sweetener to make deal happen. That That's where we are with it now. And as it continues to evolve, like I said, right now it just deflects spotlight. But as it continues to evolve, it'll start sucking that spotlight. And I'm a big fan of where there's smoke, there's fire. But I usually ignore the smoke until the fire happens because that's just the way I've always operated. But when you start plugging the plug in and it suddenly sparks, you got to get going or you got to unplug it or something. Something's got to happen. That's all I'm saying. So to sit here and now look at, well, what would good sweetener be? I, I don't care what the Edmonton Journal said. I, I haven't even read it. I'm looking at their headline. That's all I'm doing. Honestly, a good sweetener for Vancouver a guy like Kyler Yamamoto. This obviously, yes, a Puli RV is a little bit much to give up, but Kyler Yamamoto is the perfect guy if you're looking for a sweetener in the sense that why is Lucic there? Lucic is there to take care of the small guys, be that intimidation factor that I really don't think he is. However, you look at that, right? All of a sudden, you get another small guy in, which is kind of what Vancouver's gearing towards, I think, in a roster. Really small, super fast, high end skill. Well, Kyler Yamamoto, I mean, if he isn't injured, that's kind of his game. Maybe, maybe, take him, let's go. <laughs> you know where I'm going with that, right? It's We haven't seen Kyler Yamamoto's full potential in the NHL, just like we haven't seen Yessa Pugliarvita's uh, so to sit here and complain what we could have, couldn't have, just make it happen. Lucic for Erickson, make it happen. Because realistically, guys, the other side of the argument, and this real, really, my last point to it all, is the realistic argument here is the Oilers have to dump Lucic and a sweetener for cap space. Problem is, around the NHL, the reason it hasn't happened yet didn't happen at the deadline, didn't happen at any point during the season, didn't happen last offseason, is finding that deal is hella hard to do. The Oilers clearly in the past year and a half have not wanted to dump Lucic and retain salary. If that was the play like so many people suggest, they would have already done it. I know, yeah, okay, you could argue for a year and a half we pretty much had Shirelli as GM, then we had Gretzky who was kind of being puppeted a little bit at times, and now you have Holland who hasn't been able to make a trade yet. Well, you know what I'm getting at? It's, it's, it's that theory that something has to give if it's going to give, and it hasn't because it's not there to give. It's not possible in my opinion. So, Lucic for a bad contract in Erickson, guys, honestly, look at it this way. A team that struggled to score goals, it's, it's a desperate search for goal scoring. And you look at Louis Erickson this year. This is the thing. you got to look at Louis Erickson as the hockey player he is now, the hockey player he was. Whatever you want to look, he's older. He's got the extra year or the, or I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. But 11 goals. He scored 11 goals this year. Milan Lucic. You know what? Louis Erickson had 29 points. Is that is that somehow worse than Lucic? I, I don't think it is. You ask him to throw a couple of hits, you're getting your money's worth. Like seriously, for what we got out of Lucic this year, it's absolutely brutal. So it's not the worst case scenario. Neither is Neil. That's the thing. Worst case scenario is somehow we take on more salary, more term, more stupidity for nothing. That's the worst case scenario. Louis Erickson is a chance to get it right with a guy who, like the Oilers have wronged so many people, has been wronged in Vancouver. That's our chance, right? Turn the tide, get it right. Dave Tippett knows Louis Erickson. There's connections there. There's something more to it. It's possible to get done. So it's just the sweetener. I, I suggest Kyler Yamamoto. Seriously, take him, take him. I, I don't know. I'm at a loss as to what to do with Yes Puliarvi and Kyler Yamamoto because the number one thing we can't do entering next year is have them as two of our top three right wingers. That that doesn't work. That won't work. It can't work. That's the deal. Guys, I'm Tyson. This stole any TV. I'm going to have a nap. Then I'm going to have some garlic sausage and some pierogies. Then I'm going to go to sleep. 
Go have a go have a good day at work, and then we'll discuss something tomorrow around five o'clock, as per always, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in as you're scrolling into the comments because I know I've already said a lot of hot take stuff. Go rip me. Go have fun. Go go enjoy. It's Sunday night. I'm going to be napping. I'm going to be defenseless. Get in there. Have fun. Anyways, hit that subscribe button on your way down. Leave a like or a dislike. If you hated the video, friggin' give me the thumbs down. Come on. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Anyways, guys, also I'll leave a link to the merch store that I'm trying to build at the end of this video. Essentially, you should see it now. Check it out. Give me some feedback. I'll get back to you. We'll make some changes. Guys, Tyson, Dolany TV. I'm up on out of here.